Good morning. Say hi to everybody. Not quite woke up yet. Uh -huh. And I'm happy to say I'm running the heater this morning. It got down to, oh, I don't know, technically the temperature, but it was dang cold when I woke up this morning. Like last night, 1 a.m., he requested to come up on the bed with me. That's something he only does when he's cold. He was fidgeting, and 1 a.m., he woke up and started grumbling at me, and I let him jump up on the bed, and we curled up together and went back to sleep. And then at 5 a.m. when I woke up, it was cold in here. So I reached up and clicked the heater. What I wanted to show everyone, you know, I've mentioned that I'm having trouble with the old batteries. Well, we're at 12 volts this morning. And by the um, voltage graph or the the specs 12 volts is under 50% <laughs> Hi everyone. Well today is a big day. Well for me it's a big day. So my long awaited upgrading of my batteries. I'm working on this today. This is one of those, I mean, to me, this is a big thing. Uh, you know, I use, I rely on my batteries for my everyday life. And without my battery system, my, I wouldn't have my, my comforts and, you know, my, my air fryer, cooking food, refrigerator, freezer, cell phone, signal booster, all of that stuff that I, that I rely on day in and day out to make um, our lives comfortable all are due to my batteries in the solar system um, so without a good battery system I'd be lost so this is so it's a big thing for me so what I've got going on here is I'm gonna be putting 400 amp hours of lithium batteries uh, replacing my 300 amp hours of gel batteries. So I had a back and forth with the supplier of the batteries about matching the voltages before I install them. And when the batteries showed up, um, they were at 13.33 volts and 13.28 volts. So that might not seem like a big difference, but it is uh, for lithium batteries. You want them to be exactly matched before you connect them together and start using them. So I've been charging each battery individually. I've got my generator running so that I have enough power to run the charger to charge the battery so that I can get everything disconnected. So yeah, that's like a, a very uh, Rube Goldberg-esque kind of thing, you know, like Dr. Seuss with the, the ball through the tunnel and spiraling down. And So there's the battery I'm charging. There's a standalone lithium charger right there. Um, the other battery is right there. And so these three are coming out. This is staying, that's staying, but to get all of this out of here, I have to take that off the wall, take the shelf out so I can get the three batteries out so that the new batteries can go in its place. And the new batteries are gonna fit in here with about a quarter of an inch to spare. So another case of it just being a perfect size for the ambulance. Excellent. I just heard the generator kick down, so I just came in here and this thing, the charger shut off with the green light, meaning it's done. So let's check the voltage. 13.89, fully charged. It's going to drop back down and settle back at like 13.5. Okay, here we go. I think I'm ready to get this project done. 
Lefty's here to help. Yes, you are. So we've got to disconnect the charge controller, take it off the wall, get this shelf up and out of here so that we can get these three batteries disconnected and pulled out of here. Then the new batteries go back in here and just reverse. And I need this all to go pretty quickly because my fridge and freezer will have no power for the amount of time that these are disconnected. So let's get this done. heavy wow oh my god good lord so far so good to order these had to buy these two new cables here because these were about a half an inch too short to reuse unfortunately almost long enough but not quite so I got new ones there that sure looks like a little bit of leakage there it's got like the green color that you see on your battery terminals, you know? Yeah, that's not good. See that? That is not good. If I had to guess, I beat them up pretty bad. Now, these have been sitting here for several weeks since I took them out of the truck, and they were fully charged when I took them out. And these types of batteries, they should hold their charge when they're at rest with no load. So I came out here the other day, just out of curiosity, and I stuck my meter on these, 12.55 volts. That's good, that's charged. Let's try another one. 12.54 volts, that's good, that's charged. Let's try another one. 11.87. Uh oh so this one is bad it's no good anymore it's not holding its charge compared to the other two that have held their charge here for several weeks this one is no good so I was seeing that that nose diving of power because one of these just wasn't doing anything and it was actually it dragged the other ones down um, I probably I would have been better off if that one wasn't even connected and I was planning on seeing if I could give these to somebody after I took them out of the truck, but once I got them out um, and seeing that one of them is totally dead, I'm not comfortable giving these other two to anybody because I don't think they're really going to last that much longer. Even though they're holding their charge now uh, sitting here, I just don't think they're up to anything that I would want to give somebody to trust and rely on to run in their rig. So. Lights are light. <laughs> wow. Ah. Oh. Woo. Gosh, I love 
ambulances when they do stuff like this. Can you see that? We have that much room, which is basically nothing. It's not touching it, but it's very close. Hey, left, buddy. I know you're helping, but your leash is, uh, it's like how many things can you wrap yourself around? That's smart though. I mean, you saw a 400 amp hour. Yeah, and these fit in here like absolutely perfect. Like when the door shuts, uh -huh. it doesn't actually touch them, but it's like less than an eighth of an inch away. Yeah, this this rubber. So they're not going to work. Yeah, they're fine. Uh, looks good. So the last thing is to turn the charge controller back on. Ready? I gotta go change all my settings and set it up for with you. Okay. All right, gentlemen. I was just taking a little walk. Yep. Stretch those legs. Have fun. All right. It is done. So we've got two of those for 400 amp hour total. Just fit. Getting that shelf back on. You guys that have these uh, these rail mount shelves, you know how they can be a struggle, especially when you have a charge controller that I had to notch the shelf out for because it fit right above it. It's tough, but I did it. I figured out how to get it on all by myself without having to get an extra set of hands. So now I'm gonna just load all the stuff back in here. This is done entirely. Everything's operational. So I'm happy to have that done. So those Chins batteries are, they perform great. Uh, my depth of discharge in the morning, it shows uh, 89%, so I'm dropping down. And that's when I watch TV in the evening. Uh, they're not they're not being taxed at all by my regular loads um, <clears throat> they they charge up i have them charging at 14.2 volts as their boost charge once i got all the settings figured out now i had to create my own custom profile in the charge controller my charge controller did not have um, like a lithium profile built into it and i i knew that uh subsequent revisions of that same charge controller they did add a lithium profile but mine was old enough that it didn't have that built in now my my inverter charger it has a lithium profile uh, built in uh, that I'm using for that if I plug in my generator but I created my own custom profile in my EP ever charge controller I had chins uh, send me I, I sent them all of the different parameters that needed to be uh, adjusted and they sent me what I should be putting in there. So that's all been working perfectly. When I first had them hooked up the first day, I connected everything up. I come in here to change the settings in the charge controller and it kept going into battery overvolt disconnect. And I'm kind of panicking because this is my first experience with lithium batteries and my charge controller has never done that before so what it turned out to be was uh, i had the boost charge at 14.6 which is way too high from my understanding for all but the the most perfectly balanced cells so i dropped the boost voltage down and i settled at 14.2 volts and it doesn't have any issues so sunny day sun goes behind the clouds comes back out it's not going into battery overvolt so once i got those numbers set up in the charge controller i'm super happy with these things i feel like and again i'm just i'm still getting used to them like i'm not really putting them through their paces 
the gel batteries, I knew those things and their characteristics up and down. I would do whatever I wanted to those, run the air conditioner, run my air fryer, anything. Now, I've run my air fryer a bunch of days off of the lithium batteries, no problems. Uh, haven't had to run the air conditioner because it's been really crappy winter weather here. But yesterday and today again, we finally got some 60 degree sunny weather so i'm out here doing all kinds of stuff and i could finally get a camera and show you guys these new batteries so i'm really happy with the chins batteries i would recommend them they, i think they're uh, these don't have low temp um, charging cutoff and and i talked about this in another video i don't need that and we had some nights here which are pretty typical of the coldest temperatures i get into it got down to 28 for a bunch of nights here and I monitored my temperature from what the charge controller said because it has a temperature sensor on the battery and the lowest it got was 7.4 degrees Celsius. So well above freezing. Um, you know, I have the heater running and the vent of the heater is pointing right at the wall. On the other side of the wall there is where the batteries are. So I had no issues. I was really happy with that temperature and I'm hoping to get the uh, temperature monitoring set up in there so that I can have a little more accurate and trustful. Ow, oh, man. Thank you, thank you. This is from Tom, right? Oh, man. So perfect. Yeah, Tom, thank you, brother. This is for monitoring, so I, it's got the remote sensor, which I'm gonna put out in my battery cabinet, and then this readout will go on the wall up here. Thank you. Now we've got the next battery issue, and that's why I say I'm gonna call this the year of the batteries, because it's time. My cranking batteries are really suffering lately. So I bought these back in September of 2019. So they are, you know, 27 months old right now. Uh, they are really struggling to crank the truck on a cold, cold morning. It takes a lot of power to crank over these engines, these big diesels. It's four gallons of really cold oil in there. And the last two times that I had to start the truck, it really, like, I, I felt like that if it hadn't have fired when it did, that the batteries weren't going to crank it anymore. It was like, rah, 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 and then it started. <laughs> I went, oh, shit. And that's when I, the other day when that happened, I'm like, it's time. I've got to replace these. So yesterday, again, with the warm weather, I came out here and got my multimeter out and came over and put it on these both of my batteries the one under the hood and the one back here and they both read exactly the same and let's see what they are this morning it's about 9 a.m it's chilly it got down into the upper 30s last night so let me see so let me get the meter on there and let's see what they're at 12.41 not good not good at all those should be at 12.55, 12.54. So they are not holding a full charge. Uh, the truck hasn't run in, I don't know, four days, five days, I think. So if any of you have a recommendation on a cranking battery for these um, 7.3s, let me know down in the comments. I'd appreciate that. So that's where we're at in battery world. I guess it was just time. You know, I've been, uh, two and a half plus years on both of my battery setups and I guess I just used them up I beat them up <laughs> I don't feel bad about it but uh, I got way more confidence in these lithium batteries they're just so much stronger um, than than what those gels were I feel like I'm not even really taxing them at all so I'm really happy with that so Everybody, thanks for watching. Everybody take care, be safe, and we'll see y'all again really soon. Right, brother? Doesn't that sun feel good? Oh, my goodness. We've had such bad weather for about the last four weeks. This feels so good. <laughs> oh. Okay. That's my boy.
There's my boy. This is a uh, this is a big moment right here. It's morning time, obviously. This is the first morning in months that I have turned on the inverter and the television because we have the new batteries installed and we just went through uh, what is it about 6 a.m. so we've just been through you know a long long night here and the batteries are at 90 percent and have plenty of power and so I just uh, said, well, why don't I just turn on the TV? I haven't done this in a long, long time. You know, I used to turn on the television in the mornings all the time. I used to make coffee, remember, with the electric coffee maker? And then I changed my whole routine because of my battery power, my dwindling battery power. You know, using the tablet over here in the evenings and in the morning instead of turning on the inverter and the television no longer using the coffee maker and scott sent me the percolator which i've been using which i i like the coffee taste that comes out of there i don't have any problem with continuing to use that you know that coffee maker was a thousand watts quickly like three minutes but still um, so I just got out of the routine of making coffee with the coffee maker, and I think I'm just going to stick with the the um, percolator. But I just wanted to document this morning 